In this episode, I invoke the ghost of Christmas past, and I remember the times Santa forgot me. So, stick around. Welcome to Days of Dorker Past. My name's Rob, and in this episode, I'm going to talk about five 80s toys I wish I had as a kid, and I would have had them if Santa didn't drop the ball. Believe me, I know that there were a lot of kids out there that had a lot less than me, so I'm not complaining about what I did have, or that I wasn't lucky enough to get some certain toys. I'm just talking, just remembering that there were some certain things that were on my Christmas list that Santa just seemed to forget. These are definitely first world problems as the kids say nowadays, but let's get started with number one on the list. Number one on the list is Point Dread and the Talon Fighter. Part of the Masters of the Universe toy line, it was an awesome vehicle. I remember I wanted this thing so bad. It was at the top of my Christmas list. And alas, Santa did not bring it. What was great about this toy was the Point Dread fit at the top of Castle Grayskull. Now, I was very lucky to have Castle Grayskull. I'll admit that. I was very lucky. But having this cool addition to it would have pushed it over the edge and would have made it a great playset in my mind. On this channel, we've talked about how Castle Grayskull was kind of disappointing. That doesn't mean it wasn't a great toy. It was. I loved having Castle Grayskull. But something like this accessory, and if Mattel would have made other ones that would have went on there, it would have been a perfect playset at that point. But Point Dread being one thing, a cool little rock outcropping with a roost or whatever for the Talon Fighter to sit on because the Talon Fighter was this stylized bird of prey. It had gripping claws. It had wings. It had this awesome beak that came off the front of it. And it had room for one figure to sit in its cockpit. It had a great color scheme. It had a great style to it. It was just a great vehicle. A follow-up to that is, later down the road, I found cheaper a model kit that was meant to be played with, I guess, or at least displayed with a character in the cockpit. It ended up being a lot cheaper than to buy the real Talon Fighter, and of course it didn't come with the Point Dread accessory. But I remember getting it, I remember snapping all the pieces together, putting the stickers on it, and, I mean, for one thing, it had a completely different color scheme than the original Talon Fighter. But that aside, it still had wing flapping action. It had all the cool earmarks that made the Talon Fighter awesome. But it just wasn't made to be roughhoused with, to be played with, to the extent that I remember playing with it. I remember the cockpit ended up breaking. The wing mechanism just never really worked. And maybe that's what happens when you have a little kid trying to put a model together without glue or any of those things that you need to have a successful model. Anyway, great memory of the model. I wish I still had it today. I wish I had the Talon Fighter with Point Dread today. But those are how things go. Number two on the list, the infamous mobster, Jabba the Hutt. I was a huge Return of the Jedi fan. I still am to this day, and I loved Jabba the Hutt. He is, in my mind, what makes Star Wars what it is. A character that defies all conventions of a humanoid. He was a large slug oozing with personality and slime, but he was awesome. And he had an awesome figure that you move his head, his tail would wiggle. He had 
movable arms. He came with salacious crumb, and he came on this awesome base that if you used your imagination, you could drop people into the Rancor, which is another toy I didn't get, but not on this list. Anyway, I wanted him so bad. Believe me, I could make a list of just all the people in Jabba's palace that I didn't get, that I wanted so bad. And I don't know why. I don't think it was that expensive. But for some reason, Santa just never felt the need to bring that magic of Return of the Jedi home to me. Now, of course, they have awesome Jabba figures that put the original to shame. But you pay a price for it. The original's expensive. The new ones are expensive. What's a man to do? I can't get a Jabba. Run! Go! Get to the Jabba! Oh. Number three! The vehicle version of Voltron, made by Matchbox. Of course, it was a import from the original Japanese toy. I know it has this probably great backstory attached to it and what the original was in Japan. And I honestly don't know any of that, but I know it was an awesome giant robot. It would have went perfectly with the Lion Voltron that I had that my parents made me get rid of because of the big lead scare. Mm. Anyway, I just speak from memory here, so I'm probably dead wrong on a lot of this, but it was like 12 different vehicles, little cars, little helicopters, little planes that all joined together to make this giant robo. And it was perfect. But... As I said, I had the Lion Voltron, and maybe Santa got confused when I asked for another Voltron. But also, in Santa's defense, it was a very rare toy. Probably very expensive, but I remember lusting over it, and I had a couple friends at the time when I was in elementary school that had it. Darn, they were so lucky. Ugh! But, again, this is one of those things where you can't step back into the past without having some serious moolah to back it up. Hmm. One day. Maybe one day. Who knows? But until that day, I can still blame Santa for not putting him under the tree. Number four. The 12-inch Inspector Gadget figure. You know... I was a fan of Inspector Gadget. It was a funny show. It had some great stuff. And Dr. Claw was a neat villain that you tuned in week after week, day after day, wondering if they'd ever reveal what he looked like. His cat, which I can't remember the name of, was super awesome, super funny. But Inspector Gadget, of course, voiced by the great Don Adams at the time, was a neat superhero super spy whatever you want to call them but one thing about toys especially in the 80s the stuff you saw on the cartoons rarely transitioned into the toys but the 12 inch inspector gadget toy made by galoob did that you had an attachment to put the propellers that come out of his hat with their handles you had elongating hands and feet you had a real cloth trench coat. It was perfect. And I remember a friend of my parents asked me what I wanted for Christmas that year. And I told her what I, I wanted the Inspector Gadget. So leading up to the gift exchange, oh, you're really going to like what I got. Oh, it's going to be great. Oh, it wasn't there. I got a microscope that half of the stuff that came with the microscope got taken away from me. It came with scalpels and sharp things and glass plates. All that was taken away from me. So I just had this bare bones microscope that I couldn't do crap with. Not fun. Not Inspector Gadget. Ah! Now number five on this list. This was 
a toy line that I didn't have any of, and I wanted a couple of different ones, but the one that I truly, truly wanted was Corporal Kirshner in the WWF LGN Big Rubber Figures. Now, I don't even remember seeing him on Saturday Morning Wrestling. He could have been cool, he could have not been cool, but what I wanted was a dude in camouflage. Like I've talked about a couple different times in these videos, at that time period, Army stuff, Rambo stuff, Chuck Norris stuff was my cup of tea. So having a big wrestling dude in camouflage that I could pretend to be a lost giant G.I. Joe or whatever, I wanted him so bad. But my parents had this weird wrestling's fake, don't even bother stance going on. So I think that they kind of put the kibosh on it and told Santa not to get them for me. Mm. But like I said, those big figures, I mean, they're awesome. I'd love to get my hands on some of them. And little news flash, I heard LJN is making a comeback and doing independent wrestlers in that old school style. I can't wait for them to come out. Hopefully they got a good price point that someone like me can afford them. But until then, I'll just remember what could have been. That was just a quick list of five toys I wish I had as a kid. Christmas edition. Now, this used to be a series, if you will, that I did on my blog over on WordPress. And, okay, now that it's over, let me be honest, it's a little tongue-in-cheek. Believe me, I know I was lucky growing up, but still, the memory of these toys, um, I can't say haunt me, but I love talking about them, I love remembering them, and this is just a great way to remember my childhood, remember those toys, and remember what could have been. Wish I had them as a kid, wish I have them now, just, just wishes. But anyway, until next time, keep being rad, stay dorky. If you like this, hit the like. If you got something to say, leave a comment. And if you want to see more of this, hit subscribe. Thanks for watching. Peace out. Thank you for watching this episode presented by My Side of the Laundry Room. Please check out some of these other recommended videos. And if you enjoyed what you've watched, please hit the subscribe button. You can also follow on Twitter, like on Facebook, and read up on My Side of the Laundry Room at our blog. Thanks for watching. Until next time, keep being rad and stay dorky.